And today I'm going to talk a little bit about how my chronic illness held me back in life. Chronic illnesses are not all fun and dandy like I make it seem on this channel sometimes, so I thought I'd talk a little bit more about the negative side of them. And there are a lot of negatives. But I'm also going to tell you a little bit about how I overcame it. And because it's already 1pm and I just got out of the shower, I'm going to be doing my makeup as I tell you a little bit about my story. Hopefully you all don't go blind or turn to stone because of my Medusa appearance, but I promise I cover it up pretty quick, so you don't have to be scared for too long. And I hope you enjoy this video, so keep watching. Ah! Just kidding, it's me, not a scary monster. Alright, so I'm just gonna start hiding this scary looking face real quick. So, um, I feel like I'm always very positive when it comes to my Crohn's disease, and it really isn't always like that. Um, I like to show how I overcome it, but there's some things that I haven't been able to overcome. And I want to be transparent about it. So I was diagnosed at a very young age and um, had symptoms for four years before I was even diagnosed. So I was sick from the time I was about eight years old. Um, I started being stuck in the bathroom all the time and not being able to leave the bathroom. I started dropping off of the growth chart and so things seemed to be a little bit off and my dad would take me to the doctor and they would just say, you know, feed her more, eat more calories, drink more milk and she'll be good. So it went on for four years like this and nobody really believed that anything was wrong with me. My stomach started to hurt more and more and finally we went back to my pediatrician and they said, something's up, this isn't normal, and we think she might have Crohn's disease, and that's what it wound up being. So from a very young age, I was always a little bit different. Um, why is this not coming in? There we go. Um, the first real telltale sign that something was wrong with me was when I was put on steroids, and immediately my face blew up and I became super aggressive. <laughs> So when I played soccer, obviously my teammates knew something was up, but I was only like in 5th or 6th grade at this point. So I didn't understand it myself, and I feel like they didn't understand what I was trying to tell them. All I could tell them was that I was sick, and that's, you know, I was on a medicine that did this weird thing to my face and gave me a moon face. And I feel like that set me off for being a little bit, like, socially... I don't want to say socially awkward, but I would say socially delayed. Um, I was obviously not the most popular kid, and when you wind up being hospitalized a lot, um, it's hard to make friends. I was very fortunate, though, to have a really great group of friends during this time. Um, I made these friends in 6th and 7th grade, and they are still my best friends, I mean I never see them, but they, I would still consider them my best friends to this day. We literally live all over the country, so um, yeah. One of those friends is actually the one that named my ostomy Leroy, so um, yeah, very good friends, we just literally never see each other. Beyond that, um, I was definitely socially delayed, as I will call it, um, when my friends started dating people. I was not. Um, I was you know, just so nervous around anybody new that I couldn't talk. And not to mention the fact that when all of your friends are starting to grow as preteens and teenagers and you are not, that helps delay you a little bit more. At that time of like 6th and 7th grade, I only weighed 65 pounds. I was as tall as I am now because I stopped growing about that time. I stopped growing height-wise and I'm only 5'1", so imagine me. I'm 92 pounds now. Imagine me as 65 pounds. I was a scary looking child. So obviously that was not helpful in trying to find, you know, the love of my life at 12 years old. Another thing that Crohn's kind of delayed me on was getting my license. So 
Um, I was my most sick when I was about 16, 17, and that's when I was hospitalized multiple times and, um, you know, for long periods of time. And it made it really difficult for me to do anything normal that, you know, people my age were doing. So um, I did not get my license until I was 20 years old, until everything had settled down because I just... You know, I was dealing with things that other people weren't. And that made it kind of weird for me, too, because if we were ever, like, me and my friends, ever going anywhere, I couldn't drive because I didn't have a license, I didn't have a car. Um, so it, I felt like a burden. I always felt like a burden. And um, I had tried a couple times to get my license, like, take the permit tests and all that to get started, and... And then I would get sick again and it would not happen. <laughs> During this time, there was junior prom and all of that. Um, I was a junior when I got all of my surgeries, a junior in high school. And I wound up missing junior prom because I was in the hospital for rhinovirus, which is essentially the common cold, but because I was so sick, um, it wound up being a little bit worse. I wound up with nonstop nausea and like I just kept throwing up. And as a senior, you can imagine having a chronic illness like this, there is a financial burden that comes along with it all. Um, so I was able to attend prom. That's when I was dating the previous the previous guy. Because um, I sort of went to prom with him, sort of not. <laughs> that's a story in itself. Um, but that's when I was dating him and um, I wound up not going to our senior trip to Disney because like it wasn't financially possible um, because my hospital bills were through the roof. My insurance had been canceled a few times because of all the insurance problems going on in this country and um, it was like a really stressful rough time for both me and my dad. It was just the two of us um, because my mom had already passed away at that point and it was just really hard. It was like a very difficult time for um, him and myself. Like him watching me be so sick and not be able to do everything, you know, be able to send me on this trip and all that. It was just hard. But I will say that once I got my ostomy, um, my life started to turn around and things became normal. So. I became much more confident in myself. I was actually able to grow and be, you know, at least somewhat age appropriate <laughs> looking. Um, I was able to socialize more and make friends and start dating. I just felt like a real person. When people talk to me about my ostomy, they're like, how, like, that held you back. Like, that must have changed your whole life in a negative way. It really didn't. Like, it gave me my life back. I felt so much better. Um, I would spend... I remember I would be in the last class at school thinking about how I needed to run home to sit in the bathroom all night long. And I would be in the bathroom from about 3 p.m. when I got home until 8 and my dad would be like, okay, like we should probably have dinner now and I would have to prep myself to be able to leave the bathroom for a short period of time and then, you know, eat very little and run back to the bathroom until I went to sleep and that was just how my life went for a really long time so having the bag oh my god it just gave me a lot of time back um, although I was a great reader and now I'm an awful reader I used to be like one of those people who could read a book in a day not anymore <laughs> so yeah and and when I got to college I really blossomed and I just became outgoing people probably don't think that now I'm kind of an introvert but I became very outgoing. I wanted to meet everybody because I didn't really have that opportunity in high school. Um, and things wound up being really good. These are some scary looking brows. And the other push that kind of made me be a real person was actually Zach. Um, I won't go into details. <laughs> this is like... Zach and I have had a very interesting relationship, especially the start of our relationship. Um, one of the main pushes for me to get my license once I was healthy and able to do so is because <laughs> Zach may or may not have lost his license for a little bit of time. Um, I will not go into details, <laughs> but he... Um, 
basically for us to be able to see each other, one of us had to drive and it was not an option for him. So I had to make it an option for me to drive and that's what we did. And Zach had such a motivation in college, you know, both of us wound up being very like hard workers and really just trying to better ourselves in, lo in our lives. And, um, you know, he's in finance now, which is what he wanted to do. And then I wanted to be a nurse and we made it happen. And now here we are and I feel like a real person, so that's good. <laughs> so I will say, even though Crohn's kind of screwed up my younger years, it definitely has not been all bad. Um, I would not be where I am today. I don't know what I would honestly be doing in life because I don't think I would be a nurse. Um, I think I would be probably a teacher or something like that. Um, I don't know. Oh, oh, oh. But it's interesting how life shapes you this way and yeah, it's what you make of it. And this is what I've made of my screwed up life. And I would say I'm doing a pretty darn good job at it. So the message of this video is, after I spray my face, <laughs> got it in my mouth. The message of this video is don't give up. Things can be really awful and really hard, but there's a way to turn it around and and make it make this life the one that you want to be living. Um, I'm very happy where I am now and very thankful, as crazy as it seems. But I I tell you guys this all the time. I'm very thankful for my chronic illness because honestly, where would I be? What would I be doing? I love what I'm doing now. I love what I'm involved in and the opportunities this disease gave me. Isn't that so strange to say? My disease gave me all these opportunities. Um, but it really has and I just like, I don't know what I would do without it. But I do think it's important to share some of the negatives that come along with chronic illness because it's not all perfect, happy, sunshine here. You know, it's really hard talking when you're trying to do a, a lovely wing, but um, we'll see what we can do. <laughs> As I was saying, it is super important to share all sides of your disease. It definitely has not been, you know, all happy-go-lucky fun for me. <laughs> um, I have turned it into something really good, but it was a hard journey getting there. Mm, this is a little funky looking, but we'll go with it. Let me do my other eye really quick before I wind up looking like a raccoon. Screw it, I quit. We're gonna put on a lot of mascara and make my lashes so big they cover up the eyeliner. So yeah, I would love to hear from you guys in the comments below how your chronic illness has maybe delayed you a little bit or stopped you from doing something that you wanted to um, and how you overcame it. Don't just leave me the negative stuff. I need some positivity in my life. So um, please share that below. I'd love to hear how your chronic illness has affected you in that way. All right, I am all done with my lovely look here. <laughs> and uh, I look like a disco ball. Look at that, yeah, hopefully. <laughs> Sorry, I'm putting some powder on this to see if I can Dole it up a little bit. I'm a little too shiny. Got a little too excited with that highlighter. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and if you like this, please subscribe and turn on the little bell thingy so that way you'll get a notification when I put up a new video. Um, I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter. I'm definitely most active on Instagram though. It's just my favorite. But um, yeah, I hope to see you guys in my next video. Bye!